for having me as a representative of the social movement, the Democratic Socialist Political Organization of Ukraine at your conference, even though via video, I appreciate your solidarity, your attention, and your support in this ex extremely difficult time for Ukraine and its people. Thank you, delegates. Thank you, conference. Ukraine's independence right now is under threat as a result of full-scale Russian invasion into our country's territory. The state cannot afford its debt repayments any longer, and Ukraine's economy is destabilized as a result of the military campaign, increased spending on the military, and having to deal with the consequences of war. On April the 10th uh, of this year, the World Bank has published its uh, updated report on GDP prognosis, and the projection for the Ukrainian state was that the Russian invasion was going to shrink the economy by 45% in 2020 alone. Of course, the war isn't over, and we understand that this prognosis is still, even though harrowing, is rather optimistic. On March 29th, Ukraine's Prime Minister Denis Shmigel stated that the country's direct one-time losses due to the invasion already exceeded 1 trillion United States dollars, which by now would be, of course, a much higher figure one month later. And again, the war isn't over. We do not know when it will be over, and the full scale of those losses will be only assessed later. Yet at the same time, and prior to the invasion, Ukraine already was the poorest and the most indebted country in Europe. And I mean geographic Europe here. Budgetary expenditure on arms, humanitarian needs, and medical needs of the wounded have grown exponentially. In its latest report on Ukraine from March the 7th, the IMF stated that some 4.8 billion in external financing will be needed for Ukraine to weather the deep recession this year, and those figures keep being updated and growing regularly. The fund at the same time, in its so-called generous move, is setting up uh, a fund to help countries steer more resources to the nations invaded by Russia, to the nation invaded by Russia, and recognizing that the deep recession uh, and large reconstruction costs are to be expected on the backdrop of a humanitarian crisis. Yet those forms of financing are debts very often. There are some talks about setting up a, sp a special drawing rights transfer mechanism and uh, bilateral grants uh, in terms of cash to Ukraine. Yet that again will not necessarily be the money that will go where it should be, which is saving Ukrainian Ukraine and Ukrainian people, but rather will end up helping service Ukraine's mounting debts. In the aftermath of the war, Ukraine will also need money to reconstruct its homes and infrastructure, clean up and decontaminate cities and countryside. In such conditions, state debt servicing is only possible if Ukraine is to forfeit servicing the needs of its military and of the most urgent needs of its people. We know that different countries, including Canada and the United States, are approving military assistance and indeed, the Lend Lease uh, Act has been uh, voted in the United States just now. But that again will have to be repaid. And Ukraine cannot pay on those bills. It simply cannot afford them. Not only should military and, and humanitarian needs of the country be a priority and not, the, not its debt service in current or in the long run. A thorough planning for the post-war reconstruction must be thought of already uh, at the same time right now, which can only mean one thing. It is time for large-scale multifaceted international assistance, which is unconditional, and a space to be created legally in terms of policy for the government to be able to conduct politics of fiscal activism, where government is allowed to spend as much of its budget as necessary to support the needs of its population, instead of having to perform wartime austerity in the name of debt servicing. This can only be achieved by a coordinated, intentional international action. And there is capacity to do that, should there be the will. There is plenty of cash swimming around, should there be the will to direct it where it should be directed.
Loans and bonds are not the right way to help Ukraine withstand Russian aggression. Yet Ukrainian government has been pushed to start issuing war bonds in order to raise much needed cash to support its economy. And instead, Ukraine, what needs to happen is that uh, loans and uh, bonds, again, do not help uh, with the devastating and escalating humanitarian crisis and supply chains and infrastructure disruptions, chaos in human resources that is resulting from mass movement of persons, and many more. That devastation is simply too vast, and therefore financial aid and military aid is needed, unconditional. Burdening the country at war with more debt is uneconomical and it is immoral. Debt must be cancelled and unconditional large-scale financial and military assistance must be provided. The world must help Ukrainian refugees, help arm Ukrainian military and provide financial assistance on ground basis. It must help Ukraine win this war. I am part of an organization that is fighting for that to happen. We're building a fantastic international coalition of like-minded left wing left wing forces, including you. And your support in our campaign, uh, in spreading and signing our petition, in lobbying your governments, in raising through, uh, through your uh, European members of parliament this agenda, spreading it far and wide, is incalculably valuable right now. Thank you so much for your assistance, for helping us build a better country and seeing beyond the surface of what is happening in Ukraine. Thank you very much and long live solidarity.